Let's All squeak right, it, my chair. Welcome to another episode of Three Comic Money on CBSI, comicbookinvest.com. Uh, this week we're going to, we did live last week. This week we're doing sort of a, a different thing. Mike had to step out. Ben's going to join us this week. But more importantly than Ben, even though we love Ben, is we got Drew Moss with us here. And uh, if you don't know Drew Moss, he is, he will talk about some of his books. Uh, right now his big thing is Vampirilla and Red Sonja. Uh, he, he's doing the little combined book there. Um, thousands of covers, but he's actually doing the insides of them and doing covers. So he's the master of all things, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, I'm big, giving, building them up, so he better impress us because uh, we haven't really talked about anything else. So, oh no! <laughs> but uh, we're gonna play the game. So the the game, as always, is we, we're gonna flip through. We're gonna show our comics that go along with the theme that Drew chose for us. Uh, but he's gonna get the first pick on on the card game. So let's, Drew, do one, two, or three. What do you think? I'm gonna go three. All right. Ben, what do you want? Two. So that leaves me one. Let's see what it is. Oh, I'm always one. Oh, <laughs> Magic so, and monsters. And we, we stole a picture. This is actually one of Drew. If you go to his website, you can, uh, Square site, you can see his headshots that he's done of different characters. And you can buy these if you like. We thought this was a gorgeous one. I, uh, yeah, we were like, oh, we're just going to go with this one. Uh, it's just a great cover, a uh, great image. Plus, so, it's magic. It's magic. And the theme yeah. is Magic and Monsters. Yes, and I've I've drawn magic a lot. Uh, that's uh, one of the con sketches. Um, but yeah, I, I I do a lot of head sketches. Um, yeah, I found that uh, I think on your Instagram. There are tons. There's tons of great pictures on your Instagram. I I have a list. Look at. I'll even show you real quick. This is <laughs> see this thing. You're gonna. This is this is. Uh, look at that. Look at all those. So the, those, those are all people. Who are uh, requesting drawings? Oh um, my! So do you it open is, it up on uh, yeah. Instagram or through your site? Like, how do they request? I don't drawings? open it up at all. Uh, people <laughs> just contact me. Uh, just uh, like I haven't opened, I haven't opened commissions up in a couple years. Um, but <laughs> so I, I get so these guys are still waiting. Constantly. Is that what you're saying? No, no, no. They, they, I just get contacted. And I'm like, well, um, my deal is like a lot of artists take payment up front. And they yeah. do, um, you know, you pay me and I'll do it whenever I get to it. Hopefully they don't say that. Uh, <laughs> but I do the opposite. I just say, hey, I get a lot of requests. So tell me what you want. And before I start, I'll do it. And then you can we can settle up when we're done. Uh, that way uh, they feel OK because they didn't give me any money. <laughs> um, I feel OK because I didn't take their money. And if they don't want it, which has happened a few times, like whether – financials got messed up um i sell it and they usually sell like yeah. immediately so it's no big deal so we yeah, have to deal with uh, that ebay seller ebay buyers you go oh my mom said i can't buy this now but you've just ordered this <laughs> and <laughs> you tell your mom when i come over later she oh, better we, have my money <laughs> we we have gotten every excuse uh for for bad sales mm. to Everything I can't imagine if you spend all this time, especially if it's some like, hey, can you draw magic and Zantana on the same page with with uh, Captain Britain flying in from the background? And you're like, who's going to request yeah. that other than you, this one person? Yeah, well, uh, I have a, a Santa Venomized Santa Claus writing Venomized Rudolph to do. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. And he, and I'm taking a risk on that one. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, like I trust the guy. And if he wants, remember this guy collects Christmas stuff. <laughs> oh well, there you go, Ben. I if will, you add Snoopy into it, he's sold. No. Oh, my wife has a. a, a she hates the peanuts. And, uh, I don't know why. <laughs> like, I mean, she gets like visibly angry. Uh, um, but uh, I don't know. I have no idea why. But I we've been married twenty years, um, and ever since I haven't watched Peanuts. Uh, <laughs> at least not with her around. We'll keep an eye on the listings because it's getting near to. Uh, it's a great pumpkin, Charlie Brown coming. Oh soon. yeah, it's true. <laughs> oh, I love yeah. that one. Oh. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, I'm gonna get us started, and this is sort of an obscure one from an obscure series. Uh, it's a Marvel, but it's Ooh, one that no one remembers. One. Knights of the Pendragon. 
Uh, this Thank is a John Bolton cover. It's issue uh, 10. Nice. Uh, it's a gorgeous cover. When you said magic and you said monsters, I sort of went digging. I was like, I know I have a few of these just stashed in a box somewhere. And I, I usually did Alan the, Davis do the interiors. Uh, let's I think he did. I'm not sure if he did. He did some of the covers, like the issues right before this. He did, he did the insides. Um, okay. and he actually did the covers. And so, I mean, I'm not like Alan Davis. It's it so, like I was going through all the different books. And sort of saying which ones, but yeah, this is all magic and Captain Britain and all that stuff. But it, this Bolton cover is just ridiculous. Um, and so I was, I was sort of stoked when you, I was like, "Oh, sweet, I do have that one." But that, that series, you can pull up. They have some of the weirdest covers for a Marvel series. Like this, it reminds me more of Dark Horse, like what Dark Horse did. But man, I was like, "Oh, it's pretty sweet." Uh, but yeah, that's my first Knights of the Pin Dragon Ten. It's all about. Uh, a new Arthur or something uh, trying to collect the grail and go get the grail. And he's having to deal with monsters and different things like that. I mean, your typical Arthur legends uh, story. Yeah. So, yeah. But Captain Britain and Iron Man are in it. So. <laughs> well, that makes it cool. I love, I just, I just drew Captain Britain. Uh, nice. Speaking of which, I think he's right here at the color room. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, Captain Britain's an underutilized. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping he's becomes more utilized. So, right, uh, uh, Drew, actually, it is your turn. What book are you going to go with first? Oh, is it my turn? Yeah. Um. <laughs> let's see. Let's go with. Uh, Ooh, magic, magic order. order. Look at that. Um, Olivier Corbell, um, Mark Miller. Uh, writing it's a wonderful book it is uh especially if you like magic it's it's got like twists and turns um lots of murder here and this is particularly <laughs> graphic <laughs> murder there um <laughs> yeah it's pretty intense but it, it i i enjoyed it a lot and i'm not i don't read a lot of uh mark miller's things like hit girl and and mm. Um, what's the other one? Uh, the original one, uh, Kick-Ass. Uh, Kick -ass. And, uh, I think that's it. And maybe a little bit of wanted. Um, but, uh, I picked this one up cause I am a huge Olivier Coibel fan. Uh, he, his artwork is amazing. Like, yeah. uh, and he inks himself here. And I, I like Mark Morales when he inks him. Mm. Um, cause when Mark inks him, it's, 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 there's a softness to it, but when he mm -hmm. inks himself, it's 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 sketchier, and, and I don't know which one I like better. Um, to be honest, uh, they're both, and like his body language. I mean, just that alone and stuff like this. See with the little, like yeah. floating water drops, and I mean that's that's great storytelling, and it's beautiful. Uh, oh, I'm so jealous. Uh, <laughs> but that, that, that's yourself? my do you find yourself because you're an artist and because you do these books? Do you find yourself like when you wa read a book or when you what? Do you actually read the stories or you just get fascinated by the art and like going, how did that guy do this? And um, both. Uh, so I'm guilty of buying books for art more than than the stories, but I I know that's I a, not. A I have like general. six thousand behind me that I'm I bought for art. I say they're for the story, but I haven't read them. Yeah. <laughs> And 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 I do. I try and figure out like I, I like looking at the way they do things, and then I go, well, let me see how I would do that. Kind of try their their techniques, and um, I like analyzing storytelling. Mm -hmm. uh, I like composition and um, how they, they 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 play with their light. Uh, so, but then usually when I, I I look at that, I look at older artists. Um, you know, Topi and. Uh, Toth and um, Bernie Wrightson and, and yeah. um, Barry Windsor Smith and Art Adams and Simonson, like all these. Uh, Al Williamson, Wally Wood's one of my favorites. Um, but looking at the way they tell stories, you know. Uh, so uh, I really do everything to just get better and also enjoy it, but to get better too. So you just said Wally Wood. I'm, I wasn't using this, but. This is a, I guess, oh, that's it's a called Ring of the Warlords, 
but the in, first interior story is a Wally Wood story. So you nice. get all look at that. I mean, beautiful. So you, it's just gorgeous on this. I, like I just got it the other day. It's huh. a gorgeous black and white. I mean, check out that skeleton. I oh, mean, it's so good. So and look at like his his balance of black is dark and light. Yeah, like, it's just amazing. Oh um, yeah. God, see that's uh, and that's what you have to do. You look at that. I, I used to tell new artists, like young, not young in age, but young in art. I would always tell them that with storytelling, when you look at like a scene where two people are at a refrigerator, uh, grabbing stuff out, maybe making a bowl of cereal. They look at the look at what the artist chooses. He didn't just willy nilly choose angles, and I mean they're they're all to drive the story and move your eye. So don't just like say, oh, they're just eating cereal. Well, there's more to it than that. Like mm. the placement of bodies and light and, and the composition, like look at those things to improve your own work. Um, like don't just look at it, say, why did he do that? And sometimes there's no reason, like maybe they just weren't thinking, but most of the time <laughs> uh, there is a purpose. Subconsciously there could have been a reason. Yeah, yeah subconsciously. Now, see, you got me looking at the book again going, oh, man, what did Wally – because, like, he chose different panel sizes and different things, and there's a reason for it, and I hadn't even thought about that. So Yeah, he's wonderful. So, Ben, are you going to break out, like, the Wallywood original here now? It's, uh, ben C is our resident Golden Age expert, so – Oh, I wouldn't call me an expert. I, I Compared to the rest of us? Age books, I appreciate all comics, but I find myself in the bronze, silver, gold more than – You've got a Hulk stuff. number one back there, don't you? I do, and I have the Frazetta. <laughs> I don't have any Frazetta like art, obviously, but I have the High Times from 1980, the Frazetta with the nice. fan cover. It looks, it's wonderful. So, what you got for us? All right. Um, I mean, just talking about it, but um, I mean, you can't go wrong with right some. Yeah. Oh, House of Secrets. Nice. It's so, signed. Is it signed? Yeah, so the first Comic-Con I went to was 2011, um, and Wrightson was signing. And um, I had bought this book for my buddy because he was looking for it. He really needed it. He got it signed. Um, Bernie actually commented he's not, you know, nobody brings these up anymore. It's always Swamp Thing and Swamp Thing. Yeah. Um, and then when my buddy got out of comics, he hit a, you know, uh, growing up, you know, we got older and moved on and, you know, needed the money. And I was more than happy to, I got this <laughs> and the one through three. And it meant a lot because I was at that show with him and, you know. Yeah. So you actually read the SIG. <laughs> and for those not familiar with the story, this is more of a one-shot Swamp Thing, not the Swamp Thing everyone knows. And it's one of the best stories in yeah. comics. It's a key key book, I thought. Like uh, when I used to work in a comic shop, that was like a big book. This uh, was always like the eighties. In the eighties, from what I understand, the eighties and nineties, this was the one eighty one of today's Chase yeah. Browns. Hmm. And now people like I shoot. I picked up one the other day. For, I mean, three hundred something to sneeze at, but I was like three hundred dollars Swamp Thing. Hell yeah! I'm gonna. Just, <laughs> I'm just like that's. <laughs> I'm not arguing with that price. <laughs> Absolutely love it, and Len Wein too. I mean, let's not uh, yeah. the storytelling too. Yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad I can actually. Tell. I'm not usually good at talking about more than a cover, but <laughs> this I can. Yeah. Uh, uh, see, Ben, I can trump you because I have it signed by both of them. <laughs> do you really? Oh. Yeah. Uh, I it, wasn't it, gonna say that I had an eight zero and two six zero slab <laughs> because I wanted to keep it clean, but. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, that's really cool, Chris. <laughs> All right, Peter. I like that. You can't flex with Ben because Ben always can flex. Yeah. Ben. <laughs> I, I, follow, got nothing. I gotta follow the swamp, the House of Secrets picture, <laughs> and I pulled some garbage out of my pile. But no, seriously, uh, when you pick magic and monsters, first thing I thought of was more magic, more so than the monsters. So one of the first books I thought of was this. Uh, it's it's Jughead Nine. But this is the reintroduction, I guess, or the newer version of Sabrina, the Teenage Witch. Nice. And I do, I do like the Netflix show. Like, it, it's a guilty pleasure. Uh, I would be sad to see it go. But and this is a, I think this is Baltimore variant. Oh, this yeah, one. Yeah, it's the Baltimore. 
Yeah, I got this for a buck. I got this out of a dollar bin. Oh, look. good for you. Yeah, but I'm happy to, uh, yeah, to get this one because I like the cover. It's a just gorgeous little cover. I love the this version. It kind of like softened the background with the gray, where I think the regular color is a little more a uh, little, little brighter. But uh, I just like the focus of her on this cover. So that was my the Very beautiful cover. And I gotta also say, I love your shirt. <laughs> Breaking two. Breaking two. I, I love, oh, love your yeah. shirt. I I love both movies. They came out the same year, back in '84. Yeah, well, it's ridiculous that the the the, the first one is to make breakdancing a viable art form, and the second one is to, we're gonna breakdance to save community center. Yeah, we're gonna save the community and like, dan and they're dancing on like uh, bulldozers and stuff, and that would get you shot today. <laughs> Just in Portland. No. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> that's awesome. That, that that led the way for all the Step Up movies. What, Step Up 10, 12 they have right now? The, <laughs> hey, Step Up the Streets is my favorite <laughs> one. <I'm joking. laughs> Where they have like the Slurpee dance or whatever it is. <laughs> oh, yeah. So. I didn't. I wasn't aware of the Slurpee dance, but I'm gonna go look up Step Up the Streets now because <laughs> I have to see that. Uh, so I'm going. When I thought when you said magic and monsters, uh, I guess I sort of I thought of you know what? Like when I think of there's lots of Marvel characters, but when I think of magic, you gotta go with Loki. Mm -hmm. And then when I think of nice. uh, some of the the modern artists that just like somehow they, they do this mystical magic sort of look. This is a Stephanie Hans cover. Um, this is, is issue 645, but she did off and on since when Journey in the Mystery restarted. She did t several of the different covers, a lot of the Loki, Kid Loki stuff. But this is the end of sort of the story right before uh, it switches gears completely, the artist and team. But uh, the Hans, and well of it, and, I, and I'm a big fan, and uh, Drew, this is why I, I like some your stuff is because it's not just covers. She does the interiors of this stuff, just like she did the Angela Asgard, but she does the interiors. And just like you said, the she has a style and she has a look and there's a purpose behind the the images and the way she went about it. I, she's, I mean, I know this is not just her. This is her color or two. Like the fact that it switches from reds and greens and the feels of yeah. the, when you go through it, like how much, how much that plays into these, these paint. And I, and you probably can tell me, is this painted or is this a uh, computer? Oh, that's definitely digital. But yeah. like the, the, the storytelling, like with color, like that's part of it too. Like uh, um, colorists are storytellers too. Like you said, with the reds and the blues, it's like color psychology, you know, mm -hmm. uh, pulls your eyes with those bright yellows and reds. And then it cools you down on the right side with the blues. And like those guys are, uh, it's hard. Uh, those guys don't get enough credit, um, I don't think. Uh, yeah. But like you know, some of my favorite people are the colorists. Rico Renzi, he's one of oh, my yeah. favorite guys, and he's an amazing colorist. Um, what does he? I've seen uh, some Dave of Stewart. Stuff. What does uh, Renzi do? I uh, can't remember. He did a Spider Gwen. Um, That's okay. I knew he was with Rodriguez. That's what Robbie and him like. They they made yeah. them. Yes. Um, I think he did Squirrel Girl for a while. Oh, um, okay. All those, the uh, colors scream. Like, when you look at them. Yeah. He's got a unique palette that he yeah. seems to, 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 like, is stick in. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's so unique. And I feel like some people copied it. But, it, I mean, it's, hey, you know, that's the highest form of flattery, right? Like, so um, him and John Roush, he, he, was, he was doing stuff in Nick Bradshaw for a while. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. God, I, I I follow a lot of colors, like because that's like some color theory is something that um, I'm trying to get better at too. So um, yeah, I appreciate everybody who does comics. It, it's like uh, every job. I mean, I feel like not everybody gets their due, um, but if I work with you, I totally be like, you're awesome. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but that's the interesting thing. Like when I look at a comic, like some comics you pull up and you see everyone listed on the like right above the barcode or whatever. Like this one, mm -hmm. there's only Gillum and Hans listed. Uh, when I pull up, like I have Monstrous here, and I got uh, Marjorie Lou and Tate. I how you say her name? Takeda. Take uh, and but mm -hmm. it's like, okay, who is it? Just those two, or there, there's so much more to it. You never know. Like 
did they color it? But then, like, when I think of, uh, what is it? I think it's uh, Hollingsworth. Like, when his name appears, That's like, man. It, you know exactly, man, he did the colors. You know the palette he's going to use. And it rocks out uh, Bel Air's that way for me, too. Those two people, like, I... Oh, look yeah, look Jordy's out. amazing. Yeah, I mean, and they pick the artists. And you can tell artists pick them, too. Like, yeah, I'm sure you have your guys that you go to. These are the ones, if I can get them to do my book... <laughs> they, I, I pick people, man. I never, they never happen. Uh, they're, I was like, oh, can we use this guy? And they're like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But how about this person? And I'm like, oh, really? But actually, no. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, really. Oh, we can't. He, he's probably too busy. No, I asked him. Well, no, no, no. We're gonna stick with. Him. So, we so have. do you got? Do you paint by numbers? Then you send off your artwork and like, okay, if it's a two, it's this color red. And if it's a three. <laughs> Oh, oh, you know, I, I learned early, like, um, my first mini that I ever did, uh, I was really lucky that, like, I got to do it with Chris Ryle, who at the time was editor-in-chief and CIO of IDW, and he also wrote the book, so, and we were already friends, um, and when the colors came to me, they were like, okay, you want any changes, and it was my first, like, mini series so i was like really nitpicky uh and chris was like hey man like like you there's some battles you, you which one will you die for and which ones will you let go and and i looked at them all and there's only like one thing and i was like well i just this would be fine everything else is fine and he's like yeah you want these people to work with you again <laughs> so like like you know if it's not gonna kill you like in uh but and it's right, like you, I mean, it'd be like if somebody nitpicked me to death. Uh, I mean, by the second issue, this was only the first issue. Uh, the second issue, I'd be dreading, like just the, the uh, that the notes email. And not this um, guy. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not this guy again. This guy thinks his fingers like half a centimeter too long. Like you're killing me. Uh, no, but like we learned, and we're Pete and I have been learning as we've interviewed lots of artists, and now we're, we've been to some writers and different people. Like we had Koi Fam on, and, and he he mentioned uh, we oh, were talking about one of his covers, and he was like, "Dude, man, I turned this cover into the colorist, and they made it fly." It was that Daredevil Immortal cover where the the thing blends, yeah. and he's like, "I hadn't even thought of doing that." And the what he did, he turned it from a good cover to this beautiful thing. He's like, he's, and he gave all credit to the colors. Now, sadly, I can't remember the name. So, sorry, colorist, I can't remember your name on this one. Uh, Pete might slide in the name right in the middle of the video, saying Chris is dumb. And, uh, <laughs> but uh, no, we, we've learned that. And then we talked to uh, an indie guy, Bob Sally, and he was talking about no. We, the artist sat down with him and said, "Okay, I you, I like this colorist, but this is the guy you got to go with." And the, Bob's like, "I've gone with that guy now for six or seven other books because." I believed him. I mean, it was, she was it Kim Lashley. Like he was like, as someone like, I'm not yeah. going to mess with some dude who's in like 20 covers. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it's so cool for me to hear you talk about how you respect and then go, man, I would love to get this guy, but okay, I'm not going to give him, I'm going to tell him what I need to make my book, what it's supposed to be. But, uh, yeah. So, but I guess the there, there are times yeah, um, where you're like, you know, you have, uh, like, I think once I, I told a person, like I, I grade all these pages out and I was like, look at the values. It looks flat. Like they all look the same. Like mm -hmm. there's a problem there. Uh, and that was it. Like, uh, and then, you know, the, when you give examples and you're professional and you're, and you know, you're kind, uh, no one has a problem. It, it's when you're like, do it my way. This is not why I want. Then you you get that blowback, which is understandable. Like who wants to work in that? It's we're, like, we're supposed to be enjoying our job, <laughs> uh, not dreading that those emails coming in like every day. Okay, you're gonna have to At tell us I the think. book you talked about. You said you worked What's on the book, your first book. Oh. You never gave us the name of it. You said Chris Riles. Oh, let me let's see if I have it. I might have it over here somewhere. I do. So whatever. I don't know. Um, it's called The Colonized. Okay. Uh, it was about a, a group of separatists in the United States and. Uh, um, these aliens come to Earth, and the 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 lead aliens like really hyped up because he's like, "This is my chance to show all the other you know the other guys that I'm not a, 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 a can you count on a cuss, but 
uh, I don't mess things up. And uh, he ends up like tractor beaming a cow up instead of a human being because he thinks that they're, uh, you know, the dominant life form. Um, but in, in using the tractor beam, uh, I guess uh, they also pull up some corpses. Because uh, and then the tractor beam animates the corpses, and then the aliens freak out like, "Oh my god, these people here eat like these people eat people or whatever." And then they pl- it crashes into this separatist town, and then you have aliens, zombies, and in the separatist town, who since they're separatists, there's no like law enforcement or anything. Um, so it, it, it's like zombies versus aliens versus humans. All in one, and a cow. Uh, it's it's pretty ridiculous. And a cow. There's like a zombie sheep in it. Zombie horses. Uh, I gotta, I gotta find. Like, no. <laughs> so you had this yeah, all my fa- I I wanted. We've always wanted to do a sequel, um, and we just never did. Uh, but uh, I don't know. I think IDW owns the rights for the a few more years. Um, this is about six or seven years ago. Uh, and uh, Chris is no longer there. So uh, we'll have to wait until we, 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 we're we all clear to do it again. Uh, but it, it's pretty ridiculous book. I think uh, once Dave Sim did a cover, well, he did four covers. Uh, John Byrne did a cover. Zach Howard, Gabriel Rodriguez. Uh, the John Byrne cover was funny because he drew too many fingers. And uh, Chris was like, well, what do you want to do? And I was just joking. And I was like, you tell that mother, he needs to, he goes, all right, I'll do that. And I'm like, no, no, don't do that. Don't do that. And he's like, well, what did he say? He's like, he, he didn't change anything. (laughs) Of course not. (laughs) Of course not. But I was just just joking. Hopefully he didn't really tell him. (laughs) What? He just drew it with the middle finger. Oh, he should have. <laughs> I think uh, when D- Dave Sims saw my art, he was like, "You know, uh, Drew's real. F- he's got. He's really funky." And I was like, "Like, like cool in the gang, funky or stinky funky?" <laughs> and he's like, "More like cool in the gang." I was like, "All right, good, good. <laughs> All right, Drew. What's your next book that you want to talk about? Um, uh, we'll go with this one. Um, this is. Um, Mage, the hero discovered. Okay. Um, uh, my first indie book ever. Um, it starts out with Matt Wagner does pencils and inks. Um, I I, I feel bad because I, I don't. I think Matt Wagner did the colors too, if I remember correctly. But the cool thing is, around issue six, Sam Keith starts inking it. Oh, um, inking. Yeah, oh, it, yeah. It, it's a totally different thing then. Uh, these are like, look at the, and this is 1985, 86. And look at those colors. Those aren't retouched colors. Like, that's not, that's airbrush. Yeah, no, no computers. Uh, that's beautiful. No, yeah, no computers. Uh, that's what I was, I was telling you guys earlier um, that, like, I'd never seen anything. Like, oh, sorry, like that. Like, it's amazing. And with Sam Keith's inks, like, it is, he 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 took his art to the, and it even has a, and this is issue 15. I remember it took forever to come out. I think it, it was super late, but there's like a, a centerfold in it. Uh, let me see if I can find it. It, there it is. It is. Of a dragon. Hey, that's awesome. And see his glowing bat. And if you don't know the story, I don't want to tell you because it's kind of like when you find out what it's all about, you go, oh my God, that's crazy. Like, even as a 10 year old, I was like, this is, this is mind blowing. Um, like, and I don't, like I said, I don't want to tell you exactly. If you haven't read it, it's best to experience it. And that way you can have that moment, that uh, that um, M. Night Shyamalan moment. The aha moment. Of- <laughs> oh. You're like, Dad, it's, it was all there in, in my face the whole time. But you have ghosts. One of his best friends is a ghost. 
Um, you have Ed Soul. She's a, a a young lady with a magic bat. You have Mirth. He's the Earth Mage. Um, and you have Kevin, who's a reluctant hero. And then there's like the bad people, like the Grackle Flints and Red Caps, and and the, all these like um, uh, I'm not Sam Hain. Uh, they're like old folklore. Like yeah. creatures, and, and it's wonderful. If you haven't read it, um, it's probably I don't know if the trade is cheaper because I have the single issues, and I don't think they're that expensive um, no, on eBay. It's Comico, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah there's only really yeah. There's one issue that is is because of the first Grendel's backup story. Is it? Yeah, it's the first Grendel in color, in right? Color, it's like right. issue eight yeah. or something. Six. Issue 15 yes, it is issue eight. Issue. Yeah, the, 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 those Grindle stories are wonderful. It has the Hunter Rose, and it, mm. like it, they have that final battle. Like it's oh, it's wonderful. It's wonderful, no, and it's father. also done in that same style. <laughs> yes, and then you have the the airbrushing it, and oh god, if you have a chance, just I I, I totally recommend it. Um, and the sad thing is, I haven't read the other two. So that's the thing. I only knew about I didn't know about this first one. Like I thought it was started in oh. my ignorance. Oh, the image, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I here lucked out. I walked into yeah, here the a comic it. shop when I was ten. Um, my friend took me to it because uh, I was telling him about my X Men and my All Star Squadrons and stuff, and he's like, "You don't know anything. Like, come here. I'm gonna show you." And then I got to see Fish Police and Ninja Turtles and. Uh, radioactive teenage hamsters and elementals, which I like that series too. Um, the elementals are great series. Yeah, and as a ten-year-old who should have been reading it. <laughs> well, yeah. Wait a minute. Like, wait a minute. My yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Ben. What you hitting us with for number two? Um, all right, so we'll go Silver Age this time. Um, yeah, all right. I went with ASM 13. That's the one of my, that I need to get. I love that book. Oh man, I am, I, 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 oh. I, yeah. I, get, I get lost in it. Um, June 64, Ditko. I don't know, man. This is that, it's still got that classic Spidey, that early. Mm -hmm. Oh man, that fantastic Ditko cover. And it's tough to get this book in nice shape. Um, yeah, with the white? Yeah, it's just a tough cover. This is a pretty solid copy. Um, which mm. I usually don't, I mean, clearly, I usually don't care about. But with something like this, I mean, I want this clean. I want to look at this. I want to yeah. appreciate that. You know what I mean? That's beautiful. So. One day. <laughs> I have the Marvel Tales. I have like three of them. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Pete. How are you gonna beat that one? I can't. Oh. I'm not gonna try. I'm gonna shift us to a little bit more modern, as I usually do. Yeah. That's what I have on hand, and uh, going more, leaning more towards, I guess, the monster than, than the magic on this side. I'm gonna go with the the, the bloodstone. Oh, nice. Oh yeah. Yeah, because yeah, monster hunter. Like it, it kind of fits. Plus, it's. I got a channel Morello because you know he's not here. So I had to give you a, like a rear shot, give you give you a little bit of a, a hint of a butt cover. <laughs> have you, God? Have you opened those up? They're just ridiculous. They're so like t TNA the entire way through, and maybe we'll actually have a story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I still think they're going to use her for something. Oh, I think so too. But she'll be redhead. She's not going to be blind. Yeah, people like the character, so I think they're going to sneak her into something at some point. Yeah. It's just too fun not to. No, I think you're right. I mean, I actually really like her as a character. It, it was just like, it was so funny because I did that article about her. I'm like, dude, she's she is not anything other than, hey, I'm competing with Danger Girl and whatever J. Scott Campbell, other books, Gen 13. We're yeah, just there. Marvel yeah. tried their best to do their own version. Yeah. But Warren Ellis you know, shifted a little bit when he put her in Next Wave. Next yeah. Wave, I hate. I really do like that series. It's and, uh, you know, that's maybe Modoc at the end of that one. <laughs> but yeah that's nice i actually i i think there's a lot of potential with her but yeah that's a good choice and th she's now what uh works with that that kid caillou and she like chases monsters yeah uh, 
the you total marry Deadpool or something, some such. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm not All right, so book three. Uh, this is one of those. It's a really. I got actually two of them, but it's a really beat. It's a magic, and I think of genies, journey into mystery. But uh, I like this one. The reason I, got, I chased down a beat copy is for that black dot. You right and the black dots. There's only because it's such a hard, like rare variant to find. Uh, basically, if, if you don't know the story behind the black dots, it's uh, the printer decided they Marvel decided to change the price, but the printer was lazy and didn't want to go back and change uh, like reprint them all. So they just went through with black and put a twelve cent somewhere on the cover and put covered up the ten cent with a black dot. Um, not every issue did it because it was like one printer in the East Coast had already printed off their copies, but everyone else hadn't printed theirs yet. So it, it's now a variant or whatever. And there's it's four books that no one cares at all about: Journey into Mysteries, was it seventy six, uh, Gunsmoke or uh, Gunsmoke Western sixty eight, Love and Romance ninety seven. Uh, actually, those might be the only three. Um, that have it. I have the nice, I have the love and romance, and I have the journey and the mystery. The gun smoke, I've only ever seen one listed since I've started hunting these down. Uh, but it's so cool. But when I think of magic and monsters, you can't get more scary than a genie coming out at you. A gin. Uh, yeah. It's a wonderful gin. cover. Yeah. It's, I mean, I really do like these early journey before Thor. There's some great covers for some of those. So. Uh, oh, That's true. What's the third one here? Well, I have a bunch of these, so I have to grab the right one. Oh, <laughs> pick the big boy. Uh, the wild <laughs> man, even though this one always has, it also has darkness calls in it. Um, Duncan Fregredo, uh, Mike Mignola, another. You know, the odd thing is, this story is it's a lot like Mage. Um, because it has a reveal in it that's very similar to what Mage is. Um, and if you ever can, if you decide to get this, I advise you to get the library edition because the library edition has like a hundred pages of just sketches oh, and drawings by Fregredo and Mignola. Oh, um, yeah, it's a hundred and I think maybe 120 pages of drawings. Like pencil sketches, and it's wonderful. Um, with you know commentary on the bottom, it has like DF for Duncan and MM for Mike, um, and you really get some insight on their designs and how Duncan Fregredo like struggled um, working with such an iconic and stylized character that that you can't change, you know, mm -hmm. um, and how by the Wild Hunt he he kind of got the hang of it. You know, and some say even maybe surpass like the original. Mm -hmm. um, I don't say that. I say they're both wonderful in their own way because yeah. uh, I love Mike Mignola's art. So, and I love Duncan Fregredo's, but they're both different. They different. both. Uh, I I look forward to both of them. So, um, I, I I can't say one's better than the other. Uh, but I enjoy the story. The story is great. Um, uh, he goes ham on some giants in here. Like, he goes into, like, uh, and the thing is, they don't show it at the beginning. Uh, he just wakes up, and they're, like, all dead. And then you, you – I think they did it in the movie, too, um, the newest movie, but they, they didn't do it quite right. But, uh, like, he just goes nuts on these guys. He, like, rips their arms off. It's it's crazy. Um it's wonderful, but uh, definitely it, it's a nice big run and, and enjoy that. Please, God, I do. I like the new movie. It wasn't perfect, but I enjoyed it. Like it was. Yeah, it was good for like what I. I just I never go in because with that, I understand how editorial and production work with what I. I mean. All it takes is one guy to be like, eh, I don't like that. I don't and like it. If he's high, if he's high up enough, it changes. There's no like, yeah, like you have no say. And then they have to hit demographics. You know, they got to make everybody happy, not just the comic fans. Yep. Um, but then like that makes comic fans so angry. Like I'm gonna say yeah. something that's gonna be like real controversial, but I think the ending of the movie Watchmen was 
not well, it was better for the movie. Like if they had done the giant squid, I think people who haven't read the comics would just get confused. Uh, oh. and the way they did it is is kind of made it easier, more digestible for the regular person. Okay. Um, was it better? I don't know, but I think it is easier to like like wrap your head around. Um, I like how they brought it back in the series and yeah. kind of explained it. But uh, I, they couldn't have done that in the movie. Uh, I think they, they did it the way they had to do it. Uh, God, I have so many people, like other comic dudes, who, like when I go to cons, we talk about it, and I, I get I get totally destroyed for saying that. <laughs> yeah, they're just like, they're crazy. They messed it up. Yeah, now you have you have record. So all you guys at Heroes Con, you, I told you, yeah, it's better. I gotta, I gotta. I was gonna check it out, but then you know, COVID happened, and well, <laughs> yeah. Oh, Heroes Con is my favorite show. Um, and this is like a. I don't work for Heroes. Uh, I don't live in Charlotte, but it's my favorite show. And every time I go there, it feels like I'm coming home. So, um, if you've never been to Heroes Con, there's like you know, close to 300 creators, writers, artists, colorists, letterers, everyone. Um, it's all comics. If you like art and comics, man, you, you it's, it's the best. Yeah. It is by far the best. So when you go to these shows, do you like, you just said you hung, you hang out with different artists. Like, is it like, I mean, I know with 300, I mean, some of you are going to be slammed all day long. And sometimes you have these lulls, like the one con I've been to with lots of artists, there was the yeah. hall on Friday before people got there. And you, it is like, um, okay, just hanging out. What do you do? I will say at Heroes, uh, like, it never, because it shows, I forget how, 25 years. Mm. Um, yeah. It's an artist show, a creator show. I'm, I, I, I never stop at that show. Um, I had, I wish there were a little lull here and there. Because, <laughs> man, it gets rough. I actually bring help to that show. Um, just because it is, like, nonstop. Whether it's commissions or prints or books or just conversation. Um, it's wonderful. Then you have the drink and draw on Friday nights mm. and the auctions on Saturday. Um it's 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 so much fun. I and like yeah, you see a lot of the same people because uh, you know comics community is like this. Um, so like yeah, these are like the people you see three four times a year for me. I only do like um, four or five maybe six cons a year just because I, I have work to do. I can't <laughs> <laughs> I, like. I've done pages at a show just to tell an editor, like, hey, I'm still working. Uh, please don't be mad. When you see all these Instagram pics of me at a show when I know I have this deadline. Uh, and I always make sure to get ahead of time on my, my work. And I usually email my editor and like, hey, I'm not going to be turning anything in for four days. Uh, I'll be at this show. Um, and every time I've done that, they've gone, oh, I really appreciate that. So cool. Have fun. Um, and then that that stress is gone. Uh, sure. Yeah, yeah, just hanging out with other artists and writers and talking is, is fun. So at these shows, is there someone, like, when they walk up to your booth with a book, for do you, what's the most common book of yours that they come up to you to get, to get you to sign? Or, hey, can you do a head sketch of, I love your Copperhead, or I love your Ramparilla, or uh, whatever? I think Copperhead is probably the one I, that and the crow, uh, those two I sign the most. Um, the sketch I get asked the most to do Daredevil, really? Batman, Captain America, uh, and oddly enough, Moon Knight. Uh, <laughs> like, I, it, it's crazy. I, I don't know. I do a lot in Hellboy. Uh, a lot mm. of people ask me to do Hellboy. Oh, and the Hellboy you have on your but, square site's amazing. The the red background. You got a couple. You got a couple of Hellboys I've seen that that you've done. I and I yeah. did. We'll throw them up. Yeah, in I the don't. Video. 
I got gotcha. you. Yeah, I don't ever do like prints or anything of the Hellboy stuff. Um, because I know Mike doesn't like that, mm. and I'm just trying to rush because I get it, man. It's his character, and like it's a brand as well. And you're not representing his character the way he wants it represented. And, and plus, I don't care how much money he's made doing it; it's his. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's not like DC Comics. They don't. I mean, come on. They've made money hand over fist, and I, I, maybe I'm gonna get in trouble for this. Uh, but like, you're never gonna be asked to. I mean. That. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I know. Uh, yeah, like that. Era. But anyway, uh, like you do a print of that, like, I mean, what, uh, five bucks, ten bucks from their billions on that character? It's yeah. fine. Plus, it's not um, one. Like no. Corporation. Um, and apparently, uh, you know, Bill Finger didn't, you know, yeah. get any of that till later. So. Uh, that even the Bob Kane thing, like that's that's really problematic, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, but you know, like I said, the, the, those larger corporations, uh, and I've had uh, I've heard that Marvel's not quite as bad. You know, as long as you put their copyright on it, it's, it they're they're kind of okay. Because um, uh, you, I mean, really, you're not selling that many of them. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I won't do creator own things like you know, Invincible. Uh, yeah. Walking Dead, like anything that's creator owned, I'm not trying to take money from their pockets. Yeah. Um, except for Copperhead, I do draw Copperhead's like prints. I I do. But uh, that's it, because I did the book. Yeah. Like when did you you came in? What issue ten or nine? Eleven. I did what? eleven to eighteen. Okay. Um, uh, almost half. Um, yeah, Jay and 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 Scott. They're wonderful. Uh, they asked, well, Jay asked me if I wanted to do it. Um, and it's a funny story. I was actually at Heroes Con. Um, <laughs> and he was like, uh, he emailed me and was like, hey, do you want to do Copperhead? And I was like, sure, what's Copperhead? Uh, <laughs> and then he, he said the weirdest thing. He was like, oh, don't worry. I don't know what you're doing either. <laughs> and I was like, oh. He's like, he's like, well, I'll send you a couple copies. And you tell me, like, I'll send you the first two trades. You tell me if you want to do it. I read the trades, like, that night, and I was like, yeah, I'll do it. And, um, yeah, it, it just went from there. Isn't it just sort of like a Western alien sort of setting? Uh, yeah, well, he's a big fan of 80s detective shows, mm -hmm. like Spencer for Hire and, and TJ Hooker and all that stuff, right? So it has that feel to it, as in, like, I, I call it the space justified. Okay. Uh, if you've ever seen the show Justified. Yes. It's like justified in space. Um, and it's, like, more sci-fi fantasy because, like, it's they don't explain how. That was my favorite part, doing all those guns and stuff. I don't. They don't have to technically work, like, in reality. <laughs> <laughs> they just work for that. Uh, I had, like, an uh, alien assassin that is, that, uh, was um, killing people with uh, space leeches or something. <laughs> like, it, it, she had, like, no bottom jaw. It it's gross. I loved it. Because, um, uh, to me, I like drawing monsters, and aliens are just, like, space monsters. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, Copperhead, I, that's one of my favorite books I've ever done. Um, I wish I could have done more, uh, but Scott came back. Um so, you know, it, he created it. So, uh, and there was no ill will. Like I knew I was, I wasn't doing it indefinitely. So, um, just when he had time from all that DC stuff. Very cool. All right, Ben, break it out. Number three. Number oh, yeah. three. Ooh, what a beautiful. Hawk of Fear fourteen. I've never seen that. Um, it's wonderful. August 1952. Um, is that a Jack Davis? Or? It's a Graham Ingalls. And what's fascinating oh. is it's signed ga uh, Gasly, which for those who don't know, every you know, when it's uh, like Marvel had the bullpen of uh, Jumpin' Jack and um, it, Gasly was... Um, the nickname, or his nickname, rather. That's gorgeous. I've never. 
It's, it's also the origin of um, the old witch. It's one of the first ECs I got. I'm a huge horror guy. I love my ECs. I like, you know, not that I can collect a bunch, but I, you know, I get what I can and got really lucky to get this one. This is a uh, one more time. Just what a fantastic cover. Everything about yeah. it makes me happy. <laughs> the colors are amazing. They're right. So <laughs> like I'm impressed they can get that. Like back then, a printer could print off the the blends and the colors like that. Ah. Uh. The colors, the the shading, the 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 minor details in the back. But I mean, you can say that about most EC covers, right? Yeah, um, yeah. Davis, yeah, Ingles, exactly. So that's my thought. I tried to go bronze, silver, gold. I covered my vintage. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Peter. I wish you would have went last, so I didn't have to follow you every time. <laughs> I have to. F I I point the wrong direction. <laughs> you have to follow. I got you. Me. All right. Well, for my last book, so talking magic and monsters. Uh, Chris, you already brought this title up because you you brought up the uh, the artist and the writer combo, but I went with monstrous. But I got the okay. second print here, so I went with this one. I like the first print cover as well, but. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. There's just something about this second print. I mean, they did the same cover for a third but with a different uh, color for the color on the title. But there's just something like so bleak, like about this. Just kind of like the fade, you know, to nothingness is just. I don't know. It, it just kind of I I just have for a little while. I've I've only read the first trade of that, but it's a beautiful story. I like. It I loved it. Art is gorgeous in this book. Yeah. You didn't. You didn't want to go for Heroes for Hire thirteen to break out the tentacle. No, no, I, no. I did have a dollar been digging. I want to bring that in here. I thought about a couple of like I thought about this Cho Doctor Strange because I do like Michael Cho, like that kind yeah. of like uh, that modern kind of a Graphic mod look. kind of thing that he's got going from with the bright colors. But and I I wanted to stay away from Hughes because I did Hughes, <laughs> Hughes all last week. All last week with leg. God, yeah, what, what a wonderful artist that guy thought about. Yeah. Like Hellblazer, I did think about Hellblazer one just because, yeah, yeah, yeah that cover was pretty cool too. But I don't know. I wanted to go with Monstrous. Yeah, yeah, it, it's hard because there's so many books out there that you know the monsters and magic. Yeah, and you yeah. could do it all night. Um, and you know they it even bleeds into uh, mainstream. Like what was it? Uh, Action Comics Annual number one when that vampire bites Superman. Yeah. Mm. That Art Adams book, oh, like yeah. that. Wow, like I, I didn't know that until then. Like I was a kid, I looked at that. I was like, "Oh my god, Superman! <laughs> he can be bitten by vampires." What? Oh, like mind blown. <laughs> um, I still tell people that now who don't read comics, and they're like, "No way!" That they break their teeth. I was like, "That's where you're wrong." He's uh, <laughs> like, "Man." <laughs> but I pulled that one out. Yeah, magic works too. Um, well, shooting that's Superman's like biggest weakness too, isn't it? Like the well, one of it besides Kryptonite, of course. Yeah, but, I'm just like, I don't wanna get technical. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I mean one of one of the big ones where it's like they, they can throw Superman into a magical world and all of a sudden he's he's vulnerable to something else just because they want Mr. Yeah. Well, however you say his backwards name to mess with him. <laughs> Yeah, it's so <laughs> say that seven times fast. <laughs> See, that that's close to what I when I worked in a comic shop when I was in a uh, high school and part of college, uh, we almost got into the conversation that I call it, I call it the comic book grenade. Uh, when I worked at comic shops, I knew who was into what and like what they would die for, um, <laughs> and then I would walk into a group of guys and I'd be like, who wins? Green Lantern or Superman? Boosh! And I'd run away. And then, <laughs> and then they would fight about it for like two hours. My, my local oh, shop great. does that. They, they'll write a question like that on the board. Which, what are the seven best yellow themed superheroes? And they just leave it up on the board oh. so you walk in you go, and then you start thinking, and then you start having the conversation. Okay, yeah. is it Sinestro when he's and is it? And you start going through all the different yellow. It's people. the wizard, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean but that's it, the comic book grenade. 
you you got to do that sometimes just to shake yeah. it up. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> We're gonna see an image now too, right, Peter? <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, Drew, thank you for joining us. I, I'm curious. You were bringing up and talking. I love. I love hearing about uh, Copperhead and your first book, uh, Coloniz Colonizers. The Colonized. Colonized. I, I, I always screw up something. Um, thankfully, you have a name that's easier for me to say than most. Some of our guests. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you're right now working on Vampirilla Red Sonia. Uh, how long mm -hmm. have you been? You've been with that since the beginning. Mm -hmm. so, uh, it's a 12 issue maxi, so it ends at 12. Okay, I think I did issue not know 10 that. came out. Yeah, it, the last issue is wonderful. The, the it, 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 it completes itself, which is great. Um, Jordy did a, a wonderful job. Uh, like everybody knows Jordy to be this you know, amazing colorist, which she is, but her writing is, is great. Um, I, I love working with her. And I told her, I was like, when, whenever. Like you want to work again together? I totally will do that. Um, I like the way I like her pacing. I like her ideas. Uh, her dialogue is is perfect for what's going. And, and she she gives you room to breathe, like as an artist. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, she's a one. I, I mean, would I like her coloring it? I mean, I love Becca's colors on it, but if she had colored it, oh my god, right? Uh, but um. Yeah, Jordy is 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 a wonderful writer and a, a person. She's super nice. So. Didn't she do um, an image series too? With Redlands was that her? Yes. Yeah, I and like. She was covers. writing Buffy for a little. Okay. Um, but yeah, she. Uh, there was it's you know it was a, uh, it was growing pains on that book, um, because they are like. People already have preconceived notions on those characters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a you know there's a semblance of cheesecake uh, that's associated with them, and I, I remember Nate, the editor, uh, Nate Cosby, came to me. Sorry, I have to, I have to pause like, you there for a second. You just gave our a guest who's not here. He just had a heart attack because you said cheesecake with Vampirilla. He's like the diehard Vampirilla guy, and you just insulted oh, yeah. Vampirilla. I, I, I <laughs> put him more yeah. lean to it. Oh yeah, right. Sorry. Oh yeah, you, 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 yeah. Uh, then you can tell all those covers with butts on them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, Nate came to me and he was like, you know, we want to try something different. We don't want to sexualize them. Uh, we want to tell good stories. Uh, not we don't want to sell sex. We want to sell story. Because when he first came to me, I was like, oh, I don't know. Uh, I I. Uh, uh, you know, I got nieces and kids and stuff. Um, but, uh, no, that's what we set out to do. Like, tell um, just good stories. And they travel yeah. through time. Mm -hmm. um, my favorite issue is the punk rock issue in the 60s. Uh, <laughs> I really like doing that one uh, with the Stooges and that's stuff. It was uh, awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It starts out with I Want to Be Your Dog. <laughs> yeah, jeez. Oh, yeah, and then uh, it's in a club, and you can tell Vampirilla's hunting for uh, uh, a victim, I guess, in a See, way. See, that's that's a tone, um, right away. You yeah, know, it's scary, like... I put some Velvet Underground posters in the back and stuff like that. Uh, but it was it was super fun. Um, I only have one more issue left to draw, uh, and then I'm done. And then I got to move on to other things. So, um, yeah, yeah it, it's what it is. Uh, Ten just came out. It actually, comes out. They came out this Wednesday. Uh, and yes. So, how I, I, I got to ask though, you just said about the over sexualized or not, but how does it feel to work on a book knowing that? And maybe you don't know this. More than half of the people that are going to buy the books are only going to buy it for those super sexy butt covers. They they might not ever open yeah. a book. I don't know. I, uh, I I did think about that too, because um, of all the variants. God, so many variants. Um, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I just all my job is just to tell the best story I can tell. Yeah, uh, I love and that's all I worry about. One of my favorite of uh, the um, covers of that run is the 
you had put little, like little wings on her back. Um, yeah. And, and that was just sort of fun. I was like, I had never thought about, oh, yeah, Vampirelli is a bat at some point, or she has to have, she's a vampire. Yeah, yeah she, actually, um, she actually uses her wings in that issue, mm. in the first issue. Yeah. Um, I believe, and no spoilers because issue 10 is out, but like Red Sonia gets turned in like issue eight, I think. I think it's issue eight. Okay. Um, yeah. And then uh, they actually, you see the daughter of Vampirilla in issue eight as well. Hmm. Uh, which I was, which is really cool because I was like, oh, technically I got to draw a new thing. Uh, first. Even though it wasn't a big deal. Um, but I got the designer and stuff, and I, um, you know, of course, she looks very similar to Vampirilla. Um, but uh, I don't know. To be honest, though, like, I love drawing them both. But near the end, I got really into drawing Red Sonia. Uh, I, just the whole barbarian thing, you know? I love Conan. Uh, yeah. So um, I don't know. It, 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 it's going to be a weird not drawing it since I've drawn it for like a little over a year. Yeah. Uh, I got to think like the costume is tough to draw like at certain angles. Like it's kind of tough to make it make yeah, sense. Yeah, I came up with a one piece that worked. Uh, I changed it in the last three issues. I made it a little more streamlined than. I did in the other ones because she doesn't really wear a costume much. She's mm -hmm. wearing normal clothes most of the time. Mm -hmm. uh, I think in the last issue I drew, which I can't, I guess I can't say because no. that's one of the things. I don't <laughs> think she wears it at all. Uh, in that one or in issue 12. Um, it's, it's cool. I, I wish I could tell you what happened uh, because I, cause I actually thought it was Just hold it up. It's right below you right now, right? You can just hit Hit back and just show <laughs> no, us your this screen. Is, this is a uh, uh, Hellboy versus Dark Knight Batman. Um, <laughs> that's a commission. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, yeah. It, um, I don't have. Uh, I can't start issue twelve yet. So uh, once I get it, I will know. <laughs> so, uh, but gotta, I'm in in between. So I gotta ask about because you're using uh, your computer screen or whatever you talked about earlier, mm -hmm. and we we sort of we forgot to hit record when you were talking about it. Uh, I, I'm curious about like you 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 draw you say you do all your prelim stuff, and that way if you mess up a hand, you can fix it without having to redraw everything. Um, do you yeah, have like, like the Vampirilla costume that you just hit click and just drag it over and put it on her, and then? Oh uh, no, no! <laughs> I wish that would be amazing. Uh, but not like like this. Here, here's an example. Like, um, this is a Doctor Doom commission. I did. Mm -hmm. uh, I did the pencils digitally, and you can see these red lines. That's going to be like energy. Um, I did it digitally, but then, like I said, you know, like if I if I put a rock here, if I didn't like, it, I could just erase it, put a new one. Or if I say like this rock right here, this mm -hmm. little one, if I wanted to move it over a little, I could without having to redraw it, um, make it smaller. Uh, yeah, it's just so much easier. It saves so much time um, when you're composing the drawing because sometimes you, you lose your composition a little when you, you when you draw it large and you're like, oh, wait, you know, when it was smaller, it was tighter, so I need to move this in more, move this out more. Um, like when you do that with pencil, then you're like, oh, now I got to erase half the page. <laughs> your, your hands come you just live with it. it. <laughs> yeah, and, and living with it sucks because in your head, every time you see it, you know it's wrong. Um, <laughs> at least with the, the digital pencils, you can move. Now, with inks, I, I use a lot of different things. You know, this, this, uh, not Sharpie, bad. Like, uh, man, Sharpies, Sharpie. that's bold. No, no. <laughs> Sharpies are just for signing books. Uh, this is a radiograph, um, lithograph or whatever, and this is my favorite brush. It is a Sharf. Um, some people use Winsor Newtons mm. and Raphael Kolonsky's. I like Sharfs. Um, then I got tons of ink over here, and this is what I use for white. This and this. Nice. If that's the question I get asked more than anything is what do you use for your white? <laughs> and it's it's golden fluid acrylics and Molotow all-for-one markers. 
uh, paint markers, because, and color pencils. <laughs> color pencils. Nice. Um, yeah, I, I get asked so much that I, I, an art school in Korea asked me to teach my process, um, which I don't have time right now, but uh, I get asked so much in my Instagram feed that they were monitoring it, and they were like, well, we could probably make some money off of you. Uh, just <laughs> On these people alone, um, so, uh, so that we're talking. The hat. I was like, why, "Why is he wearing that?" Oh, oh, because my mother's Korean. Oh, uh, that, that explains. Uh, it. Sorry, your name yeah, doesn't make me think that. <laughs> no, my father is half Irish and half Syrian. Uh, my grandfather's Irish and my grandmother's Syrian, and then my mother's Korean. Okay. So yeah, I'm on everybody's terrorist list. <laughs> they see me speaking Korean and Syrian, and then it's all over. Like, <laughs> my mother's born in Seoul, by the way. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, um, so yeah, I have a lot of. But yeah, I, I of course, my mother. Um, we were pretty much a single mom, so I grew up Korean pretty much. So, okay. um, but yeah. Uh, yeah, that's why the hat, I, I guess, kidding. representing, and of course, the Spider-Man, too. Yeah. Right? <laughs> no, but uh, we got to bring up, though, because your hand kept going over them. Your He-Man character's right there beside you. <laughs> you got, oh, you, you mean my man at arms? Yeah, I was just the like, man what's the pink arms, arm, the... and the pink orange guy? Yeah, Beast oh, man. he's fighting a Beastman. Beastman. Sorry, I'm working for you formers over here. You want to see something cool? Well, watch this. I'm going to show you something. One second. No. Okay. I'm going to show you this. And just because this is a comic thing, and this isn't a. I'll show you this. And like I said, because it's a comic show, um, I'm going to show it. Like, this is my favorite Transformer of all time, right? He's a uh, Stegosaurus, you know. It's amazing, but this isn't what I wanted to show you. I'm showing you this because he's been my favorite toy forever. Now, my friend, if you, I don't know if you know him, or Louis LaRosa, right? I love Louis LaRosa. Uh, I think the newest thing he did is with Rick Remender. I forget the name of the book. Um, but he did like Bloodshot and Punisher and all sorts of stuff. But he did this for my birthday. Oh, <laughs> that's awesome. That is awesome. Look at that thing. Oh, is that <laughs> <amazing? It's, laughs> yeah. And then he drew me a little thing that says happy birthday, Drew, and it's like an Optimus Prime. Uh, <laughs> we talk Transformers all the time. Oh, that's awesome. But uh yeah, Louis LaRosa, if you don't know who he is, look him up and be him and XO. He did XO. Um he's God, one of the best guys in comics ever. Um, nice. His artwork is is phenomenal. Um, so awesome. definitely look his stuff up. Uh, make him some more money, like he needs it. Uh, <laughs> Everybody needs it. Yeah, don't buy my books. Buy his books. So. All right, Drew. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, yes, it, it's been a blast getting to talk, hearing some of your stories. Um, I'm, you're, I'm sure what typically happens with Peter and I and Ben might fall in this trap too. We talk to a guy, we go up and buy, go out and buy his books for ourselves. Whether or not there's any money to be made selling them, we love reading the stories. We've picked up, I mean, we do it all the time now. Every person we've interviewed, I bought more books by. And so I'm going to go and buy Vampirilla and Red Sonya. I'm going to try to pick up your issues of Copperhead um, that you mentioned. Yeah, no, I mean, if you guys give me your addresses, that. I'll send you trades of the Copperhead at least. I have tons of them. <laughs> Oh, I wasn't fishing for him, but uh, that's awesome. Well, and actually, I mean, we do this. If you're willing to do that, can you, if you send one, send a one, and we'll give it as a giveaway. We'll, we will celebrate okay. you and how awesome your, your stuff off. You're I'm interested just sketching in it. Hell, there you <laughs> go. now we're not, that might not go out. That might come to us. <laughs> send one. You know I drew it. Why does it look like a Stay Puft Marshmallow Man? I don't know. It's. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, no, Drew. <laughs> yes, if you want to. Uh, <laughs> yes, that's awesome. Oh, that's gorgeous nice. too. So um, I will send you guys a few, and one with the sketch, and you do with them what you will. Okay, thank you. Uh, but yeah, yeah, 
Guys, check out the wanna, website. Check out comicbookinvest.com. All the um, info. Um, there's some incredible, not to cut you off, Chris, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. There's some great prints on the website. We'll have all the links, not only in here on the YouTube. Um, we will also have them all over comicbookinvest.com. Um, yeah. There You're are some commissions, well. it looks like. There, there's low stock, but yeah. folks, you can get your commission in. If you see a, a Snoopy a headshot come across your desk, you know it was me. <laughs> Just don't let your wife see it. No, please. Yeah. Oh, man. Gosh, it is uh, the bane of, uh, of existence. <laughs> but, yes. but seriously, Drew, we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Anytime, guys. All right.